I should introduce myself. My name is Stefan Feichtinger. Some of you know me, some maybe not. With some of you I had real nice fights yesterday. I was very happy about that. Um, I'm from Vienna. I live in Vienna and I'm the head and founder of Spread Satura, which I founded with some friends of mine. We started out last year. Our focus is mainly rapier, Italian style around 1600, but we also do a lot of um, Bolognese sources or Florentine sources, so everything Italian that existed in the 16th century we do on the side, but in our training actually we only have rapier. So side sword was for us a good tool to get deeper into the rapier sources because the angles are still <laughs> a, bit, a bit bigger, you can see it more clearly, you can understand the principles a little bit easier when you're coming from top down. So this was great for us. Um, during this process, I kind of fell in love with side sword and the Bolognese system because it's just so versatile and, and really cool. And today we will look at a few principles that are concerned with body mechanics, um, structural postures, how to set myself in, a, in an advanced position over my enemy. Um, these principles you can easily apply to sparring or to free play with somebody else. It's like a, an easy recipe you can always use if you do not have like the theoretical knowledge of the whole system. So it, just a few key points that you can always use and later we will do some dynamic movement and see how footwork influences the whole thing and how you can use it to advantage. Of course, not everything we will do today covers the whole system of <laughs> the Bolognese school. Not everything applies in every situation and of course you can do it other ways, but I think for most of you it's not the first workshop and you're used to it that I cannot tell you everything and that probably not everything is right because nobody can tell you that except maybe Marozzo himself and he would say everything we do is pretty shit, so <laughs> let's work with what we've got. Um, for the warm-up, just start to dribble a little bit. Get one foot in front. Fencing. Um, when I clap, do a lunge. When I clap two times, switch the leading foot. And So now when I clap two times, do a lunge. When I clap one time, switch sides. Ha, two times was a lunge. <laughs> good, very good. Um, what we're doing now is, what I like to do is a, a little stretching routine for rapier, so we will it works for side sword as well. We get in a normal position. We lean back on our back foot, go in a deep seconda, and really get our uh, upper body square here. Then you shift your weight forward and go in a very stretched, almost overstretched quarter. Go back from this. Go forward, do a lunge in a crescimento. From here, pivot on your left foot, go in a deep seconda. Get your left hand to the ground, turn up even more into a very deep prima. And from here, Stay in a very deep quarter. Get your foot, uh, your weight on your right foot. And stretch forward. 
in a very deep secondo to the other side, pivot again, and into a deep prima. Get up here, I will switch so you can see me. Get up here again, left foot in front, very deep secondo. And a very stretched quarter. Back into deep seconder. Foot back. So uh, we will do a lot of only footwork for the beginning. So I think it's good with the warm up because we will move anyways. Um, First to the theoretical part, um, what we conducted from the sources, what is like always viable, is when you're in your stance, you have a stronger side and a weaker side. So when I'm with my right foot forward, my left side here is stronger. I can put more force in here and I can resist more force here. While I the side where my foot is forward is always weaker because it's hard to turn over there. So if my enemy is coming from my back, obviously it's harder to resist a force over here. It can push me away easier. Um, just to see how this is working, I will take Stefan right now to show it. So Stefan will just stand in a nice guard with his right foot position forward and I will try to press him first from the outside, then stepping a little bit further outside and press him so that he can really feel the pressure and so that he has like a comparison. I will then press from the inside and then with a circular step from more from the inside, or I can really press his fist and try to uh, disrupt his posture. So just feel in when you're forward with your right foot, how like an angular step with the front foot pivoted and the back foot pivoted influences your structure on either side. So get a partner, right foot forward, and try where you can apply more force and always stay in nice Bolognese posi positions. So like taking a Guardia di Testa for instance, see how good this is, a Porta di Ferro Stretta and your enemy is pushing wherever you have your fist. Let's round up again. As you maybe saw when you had your left foot forward, but still the right hand is your sword hand. It's pretty obvious here I can push a lot and do a lot. In Cinghiara Porta di Ferro, it's always still great. As soon as I need to turn over there to press the enemy away, I lose my structure and become unstable. <coughs> so the next thing we're gonna do is to look at the whole thing with a passing step. When I can have Stefan again. Um, my enemy is now trying to push me on my weak side. So if I'm having my weak side here, and he's pushing me and he's coming forward, I'm doing a passing step and now I have my strong side towards him and I can control him better. So he's pushing, <laughs> I switch to my strong side and I have a structural advantage over him, especially when he is with the other foot forward, but we will come to this later. Then switch sides, um, take, your, take your right foot in front, he is pushing again this side, or when I'm with my left foot in front, and he's coming, up. yes. So your partner wants to roll over the side where your foot is in front, so if I have my Left foot forward, he wants to push in here. You see, if I'm not changing, I'm getting weak or a push from the inside out here. If I'm not changing, it's stupid. 
if I'm changing, I can better turn over there. So see where your partner has his foot forward. If he has his right foot forward, I'm pushing to his outside. So he has to do the changing step. If he has his left foot forward, I will push him from the inside and forward. So from over this side. Good. See where your partner is, his foot in front, right foot, turn over the right, left foot, push him over the left. Um, first of all, something I also wanted to say to this is what I call um, freedoms of movement or im Deutschen Freiheitsgrade. That's just how I titled that for now is when you're standing with your right foot in front, it's easy for you to get fast to the left and forward or fast to the right and backward with a changing step. Of course, you can also get fast right and forward and left and backward, but you will have to do like a gathering step or something like this. And with the passes, you can easily, you have a great freedom of movement in this direction and a smaller degree of freedom of movement in this direction. So it's super nice to get over here and to get back here, but it's harder to cover the same distance in this area. Same counts for the left foot. If I'm having the left foot in front, I will take a cross here. It's easy for me to get fast over here and far and in this direction because I can do the passing step. Whereas if I want to move in this direction or in this direction, I have to do the simple steps. So keep this in mind because we will need this a lot. Um, for the next case, we will position ourselves with our partner with the same foot in front. So if my partner has his right foot in front, I'm also standing with my right foot and I will just uh, press him. Like this. Right. Now, now with opposite foot. So sorry. Mirrored. <laughs> Mirrored, yes. If he has his left foot forward, I have my right foot forward. I'm having difficulties with left and right, also with east and west, so <laughs> don't take it too seriously. Um, if he's here, and I wanna, is everybody seeing well what we're doing here? And I wanna turn like we did before towards his weak side. It's a bit stupid for me, or I, of course I can do it and it is done, but for the thing we wanna show here is if I'm going with a passing step over here, he has a lot of time to change his feet and back and be in a way better position in a nicer tempo. So if we're having this, the mirrored feet, I do not wanna go around his weak side because it is also my weak side and I'm having only a small degree of freedom of movement over there. So it's, this is not a nice step for me to get real good structure in there. Thing is, where I have like good degree of movement of freedom where I can do a nice cut is to go over here to destabilize him. You would say, okay, now a uh, bit paradox because now I'm stepping to his strong side before we said step to his weak side. Point is, if I'm going over here and he is changing feet, then he has automatically his weak side offered to me and then I can do another push. So I wanna, I wanna provoke him here to change his feet, offering me his weak side, and then I can push farther in. Um, same on the other side, if we're having this feet in front, it's not so nice to step over here and push. So I will provoke with a passing step here. So he's changing his feet and then I can turn farther to his left side. We will we see this in the place of like Anonimo in a in a dozen of instances where he is like 
when we're having paired feet, so the mirrored feet, um, provoking on one side, so he has to step back, and when he's stepping back and offering the weak side, hitting on this one. So get your feet mirrored, attack your enemy on his strong side, He's, he's doing his smart if he's just stepping backwards. <laughs> um, if he's just stepping backwards here, then I have, again, a structural advantage. So it's like a two-tempo action, like I have to think one step ahead. Good, everybody a new partner and try this. If there are any questions, anytime. So the partner should move backwards. Yeah, the partner should just move backwards with a passing step and to, to trying and to gain back the advantage, we will do that later on. Um, I saw there was at a few points some confusion. Maybe it's also like a bit counterintuitive. Um, that's why we will try the whole thing now with swords. So it should <laughs> make more sense or it is like easier to grasp. I will just take like a waste for now and we'll take Stefan again. Now we will show it with, I am with the left foot in front, he is with the right foot in front. So if I'm pressing over here, I can only take a small step, but if I'm here and I'm pressing with a gathering step and get him to present his weak side, I can now attack easier or get over there. So. What I still want is get my strong side to the strong side of the opponent, provoke him to get his weak side in and get here an advantage. Um, of course there is, if you can then directly attack or not, it's a big question of measure, how you start, what the actions are, but still, even if I'm not in measure here, then to attack, I really have him in a strong position, whereas he is in a, in a weaker position, so he has to do something again, and if it is now pressing over there, then I can again go over here. So you can play this fourth and fourth and fourth, but if you really like in strategy mezzo spada here, um, and I'm trying to pressing here the first, then I'm already in. So, just play around a bit with that. Please wear masks and just press your opponent, get in, get in a strong bind. Um, just to, to see how it works in the bind, we usually we will not press forcefully, of course, but just to see how it is developing. Because here, then, I have absolute control over his sword. Um, Switch feet how you want, just experience it from either side, how you can get your opponent in a disadvantageous position. And then see what you can do from there on. Uh, so masks and swords, please. Something I maybe should have added, thank you for <laughs> uh, getting me to this, is of course when, you, when you're starting here and I do not have an advantage, or something like this and we just start here like nobody would start and I'm going over here, he can use my tempo to just uh, work into this, but usually I see it like that, like we're dynamic and something and I got, I got here already have a tempo and can step in then. So the plays always <laughs> start like that, that you're in strategy mezzo spada and then something happens but of course you first need to create the tempo to open your opponent. So maybe we would start out of this measure and as I'm walking in, I was doing a falso, so I had a tempo and then I can go in further. So of course you're not, you're not starting usually from a static position and just give the tempo to the opponent, but you gained yourself an advantage over his blade or over the time or over the distance beforehand. Um, we will get into this, what you can do with the blade 
in a minute, but I would say let's take a short break because we're in the middle of the workshop so everybody can grab something to drink and then we look more what the blade is doing. Yeah. The thing is, what I'm trying to tell you today is not um, a tactical rule set or tactical advices how you should proceed to your opponent or how you should open your opponent or how to do the whole tactical stuff, what is recommended, but to let you experience a bit where is, where do I have I a strong posture? Where is my posture good? And in which direction is it good? And in which directions do I have the freedom to move? And in which directions movement is a little bit harder or slower. Um, not only for you to experience it for yourself, your posture, where it's strong and where it's weak, but also to start learning, scanning your opponent for his structural weaknesses and advantages. Um, one thing to the blade now, we will look at, you have a strong and a weak of the blade, but now we'll not talk about strong and weak because I think this is all clear to you. But usually the side where your blade is pointing to is stronger. So if my blade is pointing to the left, I can apply good pressure here. It's hard for him to go against this. If my point is also over there, it's strong towards this direction, but he's on the other side of my blade. I cannot really resist his force. Um, on the other hand, where my forte is, or the strong of my sword, I'm covered on this side. So if he just thrusts here, yeah, it's, it's very easy for me to parry this. Whereas if he thrusts here, I need a bigger movement. Um, so in side sword, we usually have a lot of positions that have the covered side on the other side like the strong side. So I'm covered on the outside, but I'm strong with my tip towards the inside. Same for Porta di Ferro, I'm covered on my inside, but I'm strong with my tip over there. When we will look at the rapier sources at the later ones, when the whole thing, the whole system is changing a bit, they say, nah, I wanna have both on the same side. So I straighten my arm, I'm strong over there, I'm covered over there. So it's a bit easier to think. If somebody's in rapier over here, he's weak here and open here, strong here and covered on the inside. But if I'm in size, if I have these nice angled positions, I can think now, um, Okay, so Stefan is giving me a coda longa, perfect with the right foot in front. So he is strong with his blade on the inside. He is strong with his body structure on the inside, as we experienced before. But he is only covered on the outside. So he has two strong points on the inside, one strong point on the outside. If I'm going in and I say, I'm in a distance where I can hit directly. I'm going over the outside if I have the advantage. Um, yeah, so we can play around with this now and say, mm -hmm, if he's like, he's two times strong on the inside, one time strong on the outside, it's not a good idea to attack here directly somewhere towards his inside because he has more possibilities. What I can do is to say, for instance, I will feint the thrust here. He will get his point over there. So he is now strong on this side, covered on this side, but still weak here. So he has two strong points on this side. I was using the tempo to cut around and have created myself an opening. Um, what I want now is that you take your partner, he's taking whatever position 
with the left foot in front, with the right foot in front, and you will look at him and say, okay, covered, strong from the feet, but weak from the blade on the inside. Good, so I would say hmm, he's strong with the blade over here, but uncovered and, and from the feet in a bad position. So I could now like feint the thrust here and go in over here. So now I have like the structural advantage. It's hard for him to parry this second hit. Whereas if he's in this position and I would feint here, it's easy for him to just press it out with his, with his uh, sword to get it out of the way. And if I'm going over here, it's a bit shit because he's still covered on this side and he has a structural advantage of the feet over there. So now let's take a partner. He is keeping the guard. You can take some time, see, okay, where is the opening? He has his right shoulder in front. That's a good target. He has his right foot in front. This is good. He's structurally weak over here and he cannot move so fast. Um, he has his tip over there. This is good because I can apply pressure on his blade easier. And just try and see what you can do. Um, it's a bit freer now if you say, I want to go in directly with the first hit. Try it, will usually not work, but try to provoke him somehow. And if you just count away your options. You want to provoke him on this side, open him there and attack him on the other side or whatever. So you can of course also say, ah, I want to step like we had it before, over there. I don't want to make a feint. I want to make a falso and control his blade with it and then go in here. So be a little bit creative and see how you can use your posture over the other one. You can talk with your opponent and say, please do not now defend or something. Just let me do one action. I say, okay, let me do one action. I go over here and then I will check my posture again and see if I'm still advantages after my, my action. Then you can analyze it together and say, ah, okay, this is, this is now good. I'm feeling weak in this position. I cannot parry you out other than this. And yeah, have fun with it. Everybody take a new partner and try this. I saw a lot of interesting actions and you're getting really creative with it. So this is fine and a lot of fun, but I see sometimes it gets wind up and we're taking two steps, three steps. Um, your opponent is maybe coming in and I cannot really, no matter what I'm doing, get in a better position because it's already so close. I'm always in the Nach. Um, yeah, I'm just not happy with how I got there, what I did there it's not to my advantage anymore. So I just want to do a reset and we can do this um, pretty easily with just take a big falso going to Guardia Alta. Um, we said before, right foot forward. Um, first of all, the wide positions, the low positions, these are also very defensive, very stable, um, very good. The high guards are very offensive and if you're having like a narrow stance are very instable. So you're weak to every side if you have your feet like this. So no matter where pressure is coming from, you are every direction weak. You cannot really apply force. But the great thing is you can move in every direction. You have all the freedom of the world to go here, to go here, to go here to every side, wherever you want. So there is something which I cannot really translate into English. I borrowed the word from a snowboard instruction. It's called Hochentlaster. So take the weight away after you're going upwards. This is something I just want to get in there to do the reset then. And this is when I'm in a low guard 
and I'm doing a falso in guardia alta and go back. I swing my sword up and as I'm going from the deep position in a high position, the moment my movement stops on top, I'm al almost like lifted from the ground and floating around and I'm weightless. So you don't really have your weight positioned on either foot and so you're totally free to go with either foot in either direction. So just want you now to experience this a little bit. So without a partner, we will just try start in a low guard or in a narrow guard, as in a strette or a, a larga. Just make a falso and get up. So make the falso and get again in a low guard. You're super weak up here, but super free. Then change sides, go wherever you want to go. Now you're strong and defensive again. So take this. Feel how you can, how you lift yourself up and get the freedom to move in either direction. You can take a step back. You can take it forward to the other side. Your sword is pulling you up into the air. And get your feet, feet close in a narrow stance. You can do this from either side. Good, good, good. So, you get close, you get long, you get up high, you have the freedom to do whatever. Then you get wide again, but get low. The wider you are, the lower you are, the narrower, the higher you are. Um, just as a basic principle. Um, of course, you can also form guardia alta in a wide stance, but we're not talking about this now. Um, what I wanted to do with that now, if I can have Stefan again, is to use this action for our reset. So if he is, he is just here, and maybe he is throwing a reverse at me, I just get up, get out of measure, I can step now wherever I want, and position myself back uh, to where I want it to be. So I'm breaking measure with this action. I'm gaining the total freedom of movement to move either to his left side, to his right side, forward or backward, and I can start on you. So if you get wind up in a shitty situation, like even if I'm, I'm positioned like this to him, and I say, okay, I can do nothing good anymore from this, get out, get into Guardia Alta, start anew. So now we can take a little bit more gear if you want. Your opponent is just position yourself in a, in a weaker position so you can already train it or however you want. Your opponent is doing something. Get out of measure. Take a little time to relax. The time will get slower during sparring, so fuck, 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 fuck. Okay, I'm going over here. And then decide, wait until the end of the action of your partner. You are up when you, I see, okay, he stepped here. Now I'm going over there. So you can see where he steps, analyze his posture in this movement of, or in this moment of flying up in the air and can decide, okay, I have every freedom to go wherever I want. Let's start a new in a better position. So everybody, new partner, 
and try this. Really give your partner the time to analyze you, to experience that, and then come back to it. If you're doing it in a sparring action or somewhere, you can take this movement up here the moment you're in the air to go either side. So, but this has to be fast. If you're standing and thinking longer, yes, you're not <laughs> hovering above the ground. You will have to change weight on your feet. So you just do this if you want to step to the other direction and it's fine. Um, one more thing I wanted to say to the, to the, oh, oh, fuck. exercise, <laughs> to the exercise, um, you do not have to hit now directly with your attack from Guardia Alta. What I want you is to take the moment, position yourself better than before, just to have an advantage to stand better than before the moment you had to do this because you were in an awkward position. So you had to get out. Just see that you gain some advantage again. Go back, analyze, position yourself anew, start working again. Everybody new partner and try this again. As I said, it's not something I teach you now on techniques or on tactics, how to approach your opponent or what you can do to uncover him. I just wanted you with this that you understand if he is in a certain position and you're in a certain position, who has the structural advantage, how to use it and how to get the fuck out of it again and start anew. Take some time for analysis so you can when you're going through plays from the Anonymo or the Manchulino or whatever from the Bolognese sources and you're asking yourself, why are they doing that? Just look back on strong and weak of the feet, strong and weak of the blade, covered and uncovered side, and where is the target? Is this target open or is this target open? And it will make a lot more sense. We also have in the Bolognese sources always a lot of plays that say, do this or that against an attack or an opponent, but we don't know in which position the opponent is starting in. And so if we, if we take these few things, what is strong, what is weak, um, into consideration, we can easily deduct what, in which position your opponent must have started, even if it's not written. And then you say, ah, it's clear because I wouldn't make this action and put my weak side to his strong side. That's not what I'm doing. So if you're ever in doubt and when you're reading the sources, just think about this and say, ah, okay, could make sense that he has to, has his right foot in front or his left foot because otherwise it just wouldn't be a good idea to step left or right. Um, as said, yes, now you know this, um, how to uncover your opponent, how to trick him, how to provoke him. This is all in the sources. Just get a copy of the of Marcellino, Amarotto, whatever. Then you can just have a look and do this by yourself. There is not the time to place for me to show you this here. But with these few principles, you can use this, I think, with any weapon, with any style. If you have it in mind, a lot of it is just mechanical basics. So if you get it into your system, you can work with it, I think, and you can profit of it if you train it. I said, what, what to do now? How, how can I really, with, with the knowledge of that, uh, yeah, yeah, the books give you a thousand ways. Not everything works with every opponent. And as I like to say um, in, a, in a food, um, reference, if I have like a, a simple taste or, or someone who is not used to good food, I can overwhelm him with like a lot of spices and stuff. So if I'm having an unschooled opponent, he's maybe impressed if I do something like this, even if it's just flashy moves that don't have sense. And if I have a gourmet, it's sometimes the best to serve him just a simple dish with uh, good ingredients 
that you used always. So if you have a top fighter against you, sometimes a nice falso and the hit is enough to stun him because he's not expecting such a simple thing to hit as well as that. Um, concluding, I wanted to say um, there are many recipes for Bolognese out there. Not every recipe tastes for everyone as well as for the other one. So you will see who is your guest, who are you cooking to, um, choose the right dish. Thank you very much for your attendance and If you have any questions, I will still be over there a bit to chat because I want to have money for my summer holidays. I have t-shirts for sale if you want with Marozzo and also our rapier script where the basic rapier tactics for our beginners workshop are written down. So have a nice day. <laughs>